Ready and racing. Welcome to the Dogcast for Greyhound Racing SA. Visit grsa.com.au. Yes, welcome to the Dogcast, brought to you, of course, by Greyhound Racing SA. I'm your host, Tim Edwards, joined by Greyhound Racing SA's racing manager, Sean Matheson. Sean, how are you? Good, thanks, Tim. Yes, a bit of an early start for us this morning, Mm. but yeah, really looking forward to the show. And obviously, uh, always plenty of stuff happening in Greyhound Racing NSA. Yeah, it certainly is. It's been a big couple of weeks as per normal in Greyhound Racing SA. Of course, we're going to preview the uh, 2021 Champion Puppy Final that'll be run this Sunday night at uh, Gawler. We're also going to review the semifinals of that particular event. Uh, we're also going to take a look back at the SA Straight Track Championship Final, which, uh, of course, that was a terrific race last week. Uh, the semis, of course, and the heats. And now we've got the big final coming up this week. And the interview this week is going to be with our breeder, Ray Border, who owns Aston Elena, uh, who, of course, is running in Wednesday's straight track final. He also is the owner of uh, Fresh Pet Food Co., yep. Ray Border as well, Sean. Yeah, terrific supporter um, of, of Gap and obviously Greyhound Racing Australia. Wide. A lot of the Aston dogs, everyone will know yeah. him. So it'll be a really interesting chat later today. Looking forward to that and lots more on this week's edition of the Dogcast. <laughs> The Week in Review. Yeah, The Week in Review is brought to us by Fresh Pet Food Co., proud suppliers of fresh pet food for our GAP SA Greyhounds and the GAP Prison Programs. They're based right here in South Australia. Visit their website, freshpetfoodco.com.au. Sean, let's turn our attention back to last Thursday night. Sir Truculent v Fantastic Radley. It was built up all week. A uh, little bit disappointing. So Truculent didn't go that well. Mm. Was there a, an outcome there where he was injured, Sean, or was he okay? Yeah, he got a, a slight injury. He got seven days, so it won't keep him out of racing at all. But he, he just was a – yeah, he looked flat. <laughs> yeah. And he had some flat tyres, for lack of a better word. But it's not unusual for the truck when he goes um, to a different track, either going away or coming home. His first mm. run is always a little bit – Mm, a bit par, and he was certainly below par. Mm. Having said that, fantastic Radley uh, ran another track record, Tim, on mm. the night, raced away. He was heavily supported in the market, and he'd missed two runs. There hadn't been two 600 metres the last couple of Murray Bridge meetings. So right. he, he was um, he could have been uh, a little bit flat himself, but he certainly wasn't another track record. And oh, Fantastic. And the, mm. I mean, he's got uh, two zero on the truck now. So um, the mm. truck in the coming weeks will have his chance because the, the uh, distance championship is coming up in a couple of weeks. So mm. he'll, he'll have his chance for revenge, but certainly Radley is... Uh, well in front at the moment. Yeah, I'm just not 100% sure the truck loves Murray Bridge either. Mm. I'm just not sure. I will, can't wait for Angle Park to be reopened yeah. and Fantastic Radley takes on Sir Truculent at Angle Park. That will be a spectacle. So, yeah, we forgive him for that run because he's such so. a champion. So he'll come back b- bigger and better than ever, will Sir Truculent. Last Wednesday, we saw the straight track championship uh, heats. It was a bit of a tailwind there on the day. So the, the heat times are very quick. Let's go back to Heat 1. Shivano defeated Aston Elena. Shivano ran 18.51, had box eight, stayed deep. Was too good, Sean? Yeah, really good heat, this one. Uh, those two greyhounds, uh, Shivano and Aston Elena, they ran first and second in the straight track cup back in May. Mm. So high quality heat for the first heat. Yeah. And this time Shivano got the edge on Aston Elena. And yeah, 18.51, which was a new track record at the time, as you said, a tail breeze. Uh, Beck Roman loves mm. the straight track with her greyhounds, and they all seem to fly down there. Both of them have qualified for the final, and both of them are very high quality um, standard greyhounds. So they're big players, but uh, they were the two best ones in that heat. Yeah, Ransom's Pride won heat two, stayed wide, ran 1886 from box eight, defeating uh, Zipping Sultan, who I thought will improve on that run. He found the line hard. He had box four. Uh, Ransom's Pride's another one that loves the straight track, sure. Yeah, another one mm. with Beck Roman. Um, again, uh, they go okay around the, the one turn or the circle, but they just love love it down the straight mm. at the bridge. And uh, as you mentioned, Zipping Solden hasn't really raced at on the straight track no. at all, so will be improved for the final. Craggy Island for Ray Fewings. He's a real star, this fellow. Uh, track record box one, 1849. He was absolutely brilliant, and uh, he loves it down the straight, but he's got a big motor, and he's going to be one of those X-factor dogs as we approach the Adelaide Cup Series, mm. I think, Craggy Island. Uh, Crush Your Enemy ran second, but no match for Craggy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Craigie Island, I mean, he's got the 395 track record. He's now got the 350 metre track record at the bridge. Mm. He has got popped across the border and won at the Meadows over the 525. So as you said, Tim, mm. uh, as he builds um, more strength and stamina, he mm. will definitely be a big player 
in our big features coming up in October. But just for out and out speed, mm. uh, clearly he holds a track record now. So he's definitely the dog to beat. Yeah, he's got a big future ahead of him. Spring Vinny won Heat 4, Box 2, began fair, hit the line hard, defeating Meet Joe Black. They're two dogs that could win the feature final uh, with a bit of luck in the run. Yeah, I think you're right, Tim. They don't have the the absolute brilliance out of the boxes. Um, but as you mentioned, Spring Vinny, another good performance. He actually has really good straight track form uh, he credentials. Does. Meet Joe Black. Again, Beck Roman, you know, anything that goes down the straight, just uh, support her. Um, they will need luck in the final, though, no doubt. Just to be where, just as to where they will be in the first, you know, 50, mm. you know, 50 metres. Yeah, exactly. They were the heats of the straight track. The final of that event we'll touch on in the preview. It's up this Wednesday. Last night, we had a big night at Gawler. We had two heats of the champion puppy. Two very good races on paper, and in heat number one, Deadly Mamba was able to win, sat second, just got the better of came and went. It was a real match race between these two. They drew away from the others, Spring Harbour and Canyon Storm filled third and fourth. What did you make of that first heat, Sean? Yeah, I think um, really the box draw for Deadly Mamba played a big part there. Drew box one, Dogs mm. loves the inside and has 500 metre strength and has been running against slightly better opposition. It's a grade five dog. Came and went's a grade six dog on the way through and yep. also progressing up to the 531. So expect for Troy Murray, came and went, will probably have greater improvement for mm. the final. Uh, but but they were the two clear standouts and, and that's the way it ended up in the first uh, first heat. Yep. And the second heat was won by Mally Magic. It was a bit erratic in the home straight, Mally Magic. A bit slow early, but love the way it found the line. It probably had no, well, not no chance, but it was probably not entitled to win down the back, but it found the line and, and got clear over the end to win. Um, Zinfandel Nikki stormed home. <laughs> Fantastic run. Kenya yep. Razor and Basman f- uh, finished third and fourth. Um, Mally Magic good, but Zinfandel Nikki very good. Yeah, again, as you mentioned, that would have been Mally Magic's first run at Gawler. So you can forgive for a little bit of greenness, but showed a lot of bottom end to, to get the win. But Zinfandel Nikki, gosh, if, if uh, that greyhound could just lob a bit mm. closer, yep. um, it can definitely run time and put pay to them. Again, it, it'll be a big player in the final, but... Um, you know, Kenya Razor showed good speed to lead, but got a bit tired. But I think the top two there again will be the dogs to, to watch for the final. Yeah, terrific series it's going to be last night. The uh, the heats there of the champion puppy. That's the weekend review that's brought to us by Fresh Pit Food Co. All one word, dot com dot au. The preview. Okay, the preview this week on the Dogcast is brought to us by SA Greyhound Tips Twitter feed. Free tips for SA Metro Greyhound meetings. Search at the Dogs SA and get on board. As always, gamble responsibly. Before we touch on the preview, Sean, should just make note for the uh, the public out there too, what's going on with the restrictions as far as people allowed on course? Yeah, well, so, well, I was there at Gawler last night um, mm-hmm. to do the box draw, which we'll, we'll touch on with the uh, the champion puppy at Gawler. Um, mm. Obviously, no patrons are allowed on course at present. Um, so it was just the essential staff and, and the trainers, the, the people who need to be there. And it's a, a big shout out to all our participants who, yep. are, who are doing all the right things required under government regulation. So uh, uh, good for them. But for patrons back on course, listen, we're hopeful, Tim, that... Um, later this week, I think, mm-hmm. you know, maybe Thursday, but more likely on the weekend that we'll invite patrons back on course. Yep. As long as everything goes right. I mean, things change so quickly in this environment, uh, but we're very hopeful later in the week we'll be able to get patrons on course, which is a crucial part of our industry and getting those owners and people who just love to attend mm. uh, back to the track. Um, as it is at the moment, it's behind closed doors. But we're very hopeful that that'll change, uh, you know, hopefully midweek. All right, stand by. Hopefully that changes midweek. Quick update, Angle Park. We still on track for late August? Yeah, late August. Uh, the the seven-day snap lockdown that we did have um, possibly as delayed as a couple of days. Yep. We'll probably make an announcement, you know, whether we can hit the uh, the 21st or whether it might go back just a few more days. Mm-hmm. Uh, very difficult when we've got contractors coming from interstate. Yes. Um, and there was no contract work allowed to be done. Yes. So uh, I think most people are understanding that um, there are some, it's the, it's the environment we're in, we have some slight delays, but we are super confident late mm. August mm-hmm. we will be we'll be racing. We'll be trialling very soon. Okay, brilliant. Right. Brilliant news. Can't wait for it. Looks forwarding, look forward to uh, Angle Park uh, reopening there sort of late August, early September. Of course, we're approaching our big races by that mm. time of the year yep. too, and the good weather will be uh, coming as well. So, all right, let's have a look at the previews, the two big ones this week. Let's have a look, first of all, at the straight track final on Wednesday. This is the box draw. Crush your enemies. Come up with box number one. 
for Timmy Richards. Uh, Spring Vinny's come up with two for Greg Board. Zipping Sultan's come up with box three for Ken Gill. In the four is Meet Joe Black, Rebecca Romain. Five Ransoms Pride, Rebecca Romain. Six Shivano again, Rebecca Romain. So Beck's got a good hand there. Uh, seven Craggy Island for Ray Fewings. And number eight Aston Elena for Dave Peckham. Reserves are Jervois Brewitt and Defy. Um, for me, Sean, I think it's a race between Shivano and Craggy Island. I think they're drawn together. I think they'll both begin fast. I think Zipping Sultan's probably the, the greyhound in the race that could possibly upstage the pair of them if they found trouble and he was close enough because he will find the line yep. and now that he's had the run down the straight. Yeah, I think you're, you're looking at that quite right, Tim. I mean, I think the box draw... Uh, has helped those greyhounds out wide. Shivano, Craggy Island, and Aston Elena from eight does mm. like box eight. Uh, with Crush Your Enemy for Tim Richards, showed in the first, in its heat, and that was its first run um, down the straight track, mm. wanted to get wide, and it wants to get wide normally in its races. So I'm a little bit concerned about the likes of Spring Vinny and Zipping Sold and meet Joe Black, who are not brilliant away. Mm. Crush Your Enemy is a quick beginner, and he wants to go right. So I'm a little bit concerned about where they, where they might cop a slight check and you can't mm. afford to do it no. down the straight. So I'm like you. I'm liking the, the three out wide. Shivano, Craggy Island, Asselina. It's a bit of a toss up for me, but I will go with Craggy Island. I think for mm. Ray Fewings, just that brilliance the dog has and it's shown it over a long period of time. A very, very quick dog. And down the straight, they're running in a straight line. So I mm. think that um, he'll be the dog to beat. But I'd, I'd just be looking at the three out wide because I think from the box draw, they'll get the clearest run. Yeah, there's two ways of looking at it, I guess. If Crush Your Enemy begins and runs right-handed early and, and collides with a few that begin out wide yeah. quickly, yeah. it may open it up for something like Spring Vinny or Zipping Sultan who find the rail behind them. Correct. No, they could mm. come right through the middle. It's just a matter of just having a, just a bit of clear running early and it could open it up. As you mentioned, I think Crush Your Enemy is the key for a lot of these uh, competitors. They're looking at what this dog's going to do. Mm. If they miss it slightly. I mean, Crush Your Enemy is a big chance as well, by, by the way. Yeah. Second look at the track and uh, has got good speed. But you think the other ones um, will be a, a better chance. But Spring Vinny and Zipping Sultan super strong and will be improved by their runs last week. All right. We're both with Craggy Island. The champion puppy final Sunday night. This will be the box draw. Let's hope we can get a crowd on track for this because it will be a big night. Uh, Kenya Storms come up with the red. Cayman Wentz come up with box two. In three is Mally Magic. Four is Kenya Razor. Five's Infandel Nikki. Uh, she's found another bad box draw. Six, Bazman. Seven, Spring Harbour. And eight is Deadly Mumba. Deadly Mumba won from the pink two starts ago, Sean. Probably a better box one dog. But um, I think the way the box draws fell here, I think Cayman Wentz going to take improvement out of that run on Sunday night just gone. He might be able to lob on the lead here from box two. He might be hard to catch. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he's got the speed and, and he will be improved by that run. Um, I, I'm, I'd like to be tipping Zinfandel Nicky. Just I know that the ability mm. that this greyhound has got. And I think that um, uh, Nicky will get a chance here because can you raise her from the four? Mm. Showed in the heat. It's got very good speed. So I'm I'm actually leaning more so that Kenya Razor might be able to lead. Mm -hmm. um, crossover came and went. And Zinfandel Nicky might just get that clear passage early. And that, run on. That, and run on. Uh, like you, though, Deadly Mamba, uh, he's not a one-trick pony. Box one last week, oh, sorry, on Sunday night, helped with the heat. Can win from box eight. Got to be very hard to beat. And the Rasmussens, Tim, mm. um, they're having a wonderful run at Gawler. Um, obviously, they're based out at Murray Bridge, but the affinity they've had with the Angle Park um, um, shutdown for the redevelopment, they've been great supporters of Gawler, uh, not not just because of Angle Park, but during this period of time. And they're getting the results. I mean, they've mm. won the two feature races, the Produce, the Howard Ashton. They've got a, a, a strong hand in the champion puppy. And who's to say they won't take another feature win? But, however, I'm leaning towards Infinity. Nikki, just with a bit of luck okay. in the run. All right, so you're going to play Zinfandel Nikki at this stage. Yep. I'm with came and went, but as I agree with you there, I think Mally Magic, Deadly Mamba mm. have both got great chances. It promises to be a great night there Sunday night, and as we said, we'll keep everybody updated during the week on the social medias as far as if pu a public are allowed in for next Sunday night, Sean. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, it was positive news over the weekend that the mm. government opened up the the cross border, the 70 k's. It went from 40 k's to 70 k's, which really helps our. Um, uh, Mount Gambier uh, mm. participants and those who really support Mount Gambier just across the border get a few more into the state, which is a positive sign for everything else opening up. Um, we're really hopeful, um, as we mentioned, that we'll get patrons back uh, later this weekend. And, and yeah, 
look at our website and all of our socials for all of that information. Yep, we'll keep you updated. That's been the preview. Of course, we've got no racing at this stage Thursday night. We don't have the fields through, Sean, at this stage for Thursday, so we can't give everybody a winner, but we'll chuck something up on Twitter during the week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so obviously on Thursday night, it'll be the heat of the SA Sprint Championship. Mm. Just on that, no national finals um, mm. for, for the sprint and distance, unfortunately. And obviously the straight track, there was going to be a national final for that, unfortunately, yeah. in Queensland. None of that. But we'll still have our state heat. So it'll be wonderful racing on Thursday night. Yeah, looking forward. And as we said, we'll, we'll chuck some tips up on Twitter during the week. That was the preview brought to you by SA Greyhound Tips Twitter feed. Free tips for SA Metro Greyhound meetings. Search at The Dogs SA and get on board. The Interview. Our interview this week on the Dogcast is with Ray Border, a big name in greyhound racing all over Australia. And Ray's been kind enough to give us some of his time today on the Dogcast. How are you, Ray? I'm very good, thank you very much. You're with uh, Tim Edwards and Sean Matheson here, Ray. Uh, thanks for joining us on the Dogcast. Uh, first of all, let's touch on your, uh, I guess, your interest in greyhound racing. It, y- your name's been big in greyhound racing for a long time. Where did the, where did the passion come from, Ray? And and how many exact years have you been involved with greyhound racing? Yeah, it's a good question. It's uh, I was originally involved. Uh, my sister was going out with uh, one of the top apprentice jockeys, um, and that's what sparked up my interest in um, racing. And I quickly worked out I wasn't going to be a jockey, <laughs> and I couldn't afford a racehorse, and uh, I. I just stumbled into greyhound racing. Um, well, I was 17 years old, um, so yeah. that's going on nearly 50 years, um, and uh, uh, that's how I got involved. I looked at uh, greyhound racing as a, bit, a little bit more uh, obtainable, mm. and uh, my mum helped me buy my first greyhound, and I've been hooked ever since. And you've had lots and lots of greyhounds over the years, Ray. How many do you own at the moment? There'd be hundreds, wouldn't there? Uh, yes. Um, it's, okay. it's a bit embarrassing, actually. There's uh, Last time I counted, there was 950, but I think it's over wow. 1,000 now because I've got over 30 brood bitches and um, just about every month they're adding another 10 or 15 to my total and, um yeah, and then, you know, it ranges from young pups to brood bitches to stud dogs to dogs racing all over Australia to dogs that I um, hold on to after they've finished racing to be gapped or um, if they can't be gapped, I just um, uh, uh, just keep them going until they're uh, ready to um, go to the uh, kennel in the sky. So I, I, I've done that forever. I, mm. I always just keep them. I hope you've got a good app on your phone, Ray, uh, to tell you when all your greyhounds are actually running. If you've got a 900 that you own, um, no doubt you, you're running probably, you know, 10 or 20 a day. Would that be about right? Yeah, something like that. Well, it, it's pretty easy. And that was one of the reasons why I, I've got a prefix uh, of Aston, because then, you know, I can easily mm. look them up that way, um, other than if they had all different names, it would be really hard to control or or see them. I've got in my office. Uh, I have a screen that's on mm. all day, and it, if it's not looking at uh, different cameras of different businesses of mine, it, I've got it on uh, Sky, looking to see what dogs are racing. Yeah, talking about your businesses there, uh, Fresh Pet Food Co., the uh, sponsors of the Champion Puppy Final. Tell us about the company. They've been sponsoring the Gap SA program for a while now too. Yeah, what it is, it's an offshoot of my um, export company, Macro Meats, that does human consumption game meat products. We export to over 50 countries in the wo- around the world. And what actually happens when there's some product that's out of spec, and it might be just minor, mm. um, we do what we call downgrade it to uh, pet food. Okay. If we export, all what we do is we uh do the the australian market as well it's human grade um pet meat from an export work so it's fairly high standard and um that's why they got involved with gap because it was a good fit yeah well that's that's a great idea and uh, the company's obviously very successful and probably one of a lot of companies that you have ownership of uh ray is that right 
Yeah, in the group. See, now, Dave, my first company was Macro Meats, mm. but we do more than just that. So we changed a few years ago to be called the Macro Group Australia, which is a group of, there's an export meat company, there's a leather company, there's a tanning company, there's a fashion company, there's a transport, there's a building side of it, a, a, a laboratories, um, a, pet to, a pet food company, a pet treat company, mm. and, and a few others. So they all have something to do with each other, but they're all run independently. Yeah. Okay. And what about Aston and Elena, the greyhound that you've got ownership in the straight track final on Wednesday? Um, what's the chances there, you're thinking, box number eight? But it's a very fast dog. It took a while to work out what racing was all about, but he, he's a fast dog. I, I bred him as well. He, look, it's a tough race. It's a very good race, actually. And uh, uh, Craggy Island is a very fast dog as well. So there's a couple of track hold, uh, record holders in the race, so that tells you what it's, how good the race is. I think if he does his best and he just, from the outside, he just keeps going straight, he's, he's a chance. Is he the best chance for you this week anywhere around Australia or is there something else there that you like that, that the punters might be able to have some money on? Um, I think he, look, it's a very tough race for him, but he'll be at some odds. Mm. I think the there's a couple of new starters that you'll see um, popping up and normally I don't like to start them unless they're mm. half a chance. Um, but I think um, Aston Fastnet, in um, at Warrigal Classic, he's uh, he's just going super right now, and uh, I uh, I think he could be I think he could be at some odds because it's uh, such a good race. So I'd follow him. He's a very good dog. All right, Aston Fastnet. All right, uh, we'll look forward to seeing what Aston Elena can do on Wednesday. And Sean, you've got a question for Ray as well. Yeah, Ray, just on on your dogs, obviously Aston Fastnet from the same litter, Aston Rupee, which is a, the the boom dog, I suppose, in Australia, really um, being. Um, coined the fastest dog in the world, really, based around what he did in the Speed Star, um, and he's just gone from strength to strength. Now, one race that's eluded you on the calendar. I was just looking through the previous Adelaide Cup winners, Ray, and and it's eluded you. But with the change to the Million Dollar Chase going a little bit earlier, which one would suspect the likes of Aston Rupee would be heading for? But that's a, a really good option, possibly. Would we possibly see Aston Rupee here in Adelaide for the uh, for the Adelaide Cup? And, and and obviously it is a race you haven't won yet, so I, I imagine that's on your bucket list to do. Um, well, look, I, I, certainly because it's my hometown, I, I, I'd like to win, I, I've got to say it, uh, Sean, my second Adelaide Cup, because I oh. did win an Adelaide Cup with a dog called uh, Brookside Bear. That oh. was a prefix I had previously. Um, in 2002. And, uh, yep. Yes, yes, he was mine. Um, but yeah, look, I, I, I dearly would love to um, win another Adelaide Cup. Uh, and um, he is a very good dog, Aston Fastnet. And I've got a few others that are just coming through as well. But it's a matter of if they suit the new track, mm, which yeah. is going to be really interesting. It'll. I, I'm not sure how, how it will change things, but uh, certainly... It's going to be very interesting, and I can't wait for it to open. Yep, we can't wait either, Ray. Yeah, look, thanks for your time. We really uh, appreciate your, uh, I guess, your um, interest in greyhound racing, your passion, your sponsorship, everything that you do for greyhound racing Australia. Why? But in particular, South Australia, because that's the area that we're concentrating on. And we thank you for your time, Ray, and, and best of luck on Wednesday down the straight with Aston and Lena, and we'll keep an eye on Aston Fastnet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks Ray. Ray. Ray Border, our uh, guest here on the Dogcast. He's got a lot of dogs, 900 dogs there, yes. Sean. Um, my dream is to have one one day, <laughs> not 900. Well, as Ray mentioned, it's probably uh, it, it's good for him to have that prefix of Aston because it's easy to look for them all mm. in, the, in the form guides. But he's um, a yeah, wonderful supporter of Greyhound Racing over a long period of time. And, and uh, he puts the time and effort in. Um, he puts a lot of money into the Greyhound Racing and he, yeah. and he gets the rewards out of it as well. Yeah, he certainly does. Um, that's been another edition of the Dogcast. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. We'll be focusing on the uh, Sprint Championship final, Sean, in the next couple of weeks. Looking forward to it. We'll catch you then.